Felix here. Good morning to you, pre-market life. What are we going to talk about? Well, markets are looking a little sour, but there are some excitements. Uh, the headline is not intended to put out a crash video, but we should talk about what Morgan Stanley are saying. Before we get started, destroy that like button. Come on, you can do it. And uh, do feel free to ask your questions. I will do my utmost to answer every single one of them. So don't be shy. I can see lots of you guys already on here. Philip, CH, Beast, Patrick, David. A huge welcome uh, to the channel and community. So what have we got in store here for you? None of this is financial advice. Of course, this is entertainment. Be smart, check your own facts, and just generally be smart. I've got something for free for free, which is... Jeffrey's top 17 cheap stocks, as they call them, that they say will rebound. Uh, and that is a lovely spreadsheet here. You can see my key metrics. If you joined my last webinar, you'll know what those metrics mean. But otherwise, you can figure it out. Or you can just ask me. So download that while you can. And on the note of webinars, we're running on Saturday and Sunday, a double whammy of a free options training. You will learn how to earn consistent income with options. If you know nothing about options or you know something about options, I think it'll be enlightening. So sign up for it. It won't be on YouTube. So unless you go to felixfriends.org slash webinar, you will miss out. You'll be sad all weekend. And we don't want you to be sad. Um, let's look a little at the pre-market here and what's going on. Lucid rallying 10% up. Uh, that's now a market cap of 72 billion US dollars. Rivian up 10%. Yes, the EV world is getting started. 129 billion market cap. GGPI, my um, new favorite. Uh, that's not a stock recommendation, but if you watched my two videos on this, and if you even heard me yabbering on about Polestar literally since December 2020, uh, then you know I'm excited about this. It's now at 1557 pre market, which makes me very, very happy. That's a very nice return. Uh, what else is up? Neo is up to 41.10. Xpang's up. Yang's up. Even Alibaba is up. Uh, the education stocks, the Chinese ones are also up, which I don't like because I've shorted them. PayPal continuing its very gradual recovery at 215 pre-market. And what's in the doldrums? Well, pay, uh, Tesla is at 1,003 Elon selling there, having an impact. NVIDIA is down somewhat. Uh, SoFi is down almost 2% pre-market here. And Coin down 3.67%, not really catching much of a break there. Uh, Facebook also down just ever so slightly. Do we have any great big economic news today? Well, yes and no. Retail sales are out. Um, are they already out? 9.30? How is that possible? Okay. Apparently they're out already. Okay. So retail sales are better than expected uh, month on month uh, up from 1.2% expected to 1.7%. Uh, also, excluding autos, they are, where they are much better than expected. Export prices are up and import prices are up. So inflation is well and alive. Uh, that's news there. We are going to get a little bit more key data later on in the week. But um, it's not a huge week in terms of economic data here. But so the, these kind of sales figures are a good indicator of what's going on in the economy. So Shooters Joe says, looks like a good day to fill your bags. Depends on what you're buying. Daniel wants to talk about NFTs. Okay, my thought on NFTs, very, very quick answer here is, if you're going to buy NFTs, buy the truly rare and buy something that will still be famous in 20 years' time. So the greatest basketball player who's ever lived, his ultimate whatever, that will still be something in 20 years' time. Uh, a, a squeaky green furry creature? Uh, probably not. So I would go for the truly rare and therefore the truly expensive. And I'd only go for those because those will be like art or like collectibles. But all the stuff that's just sort of in the mid area and not worth, not worth very much, I would personally uh, stay clear of. Um, uh, Biden and she, absolutely, Thomas is throwing out there. So Biden and she have talked today. And I've got a little roundup on this here. There is actually, if you are interested in the Chinese space, it's a great email I get from a, a blog called Peking Knowledge. It's very China focused. So it's very much sort of like 
inofficially what the officials are saying in China, but it gives you a very, very different perspective. And I like reading opposing things. So uh, they, they basically came through here with a pretty pop, Po uh, positive take on the whole thing that you know the US confirmed there's only one China and that they're talking and they're open to talking and those kind of thing. Nothing super specific. We didn't really expect that, but it's generally I think a positive chat. There wasn't anything scary in there. Nobody stomped out and nobody threw any eggs. So I think from that point of view, we're making progress here. So I do think it's positive. The markets in Asia and I think the markets in the US also are seeing this as a step in the right direction because we are here as investors. We want to make money. We don't really care about politics. And if politics gets in the way of our investing, then we are not a big fan. So that's sort of a really quick summary up here. Um, Howard, uh, the webinar is indeed not ideal timing for Europeans. We will try and do something about that um, afterwards, Howard. I'm experimenting with some different times for the for the uh, webinars. This one, I suppose, is more for Asia and US time zone. It's a little bit difficult if you are in between. I totally appreciate that, Howard. Uh, I, I did see your message on that. Uh, we will, don't worry, there'll be lots more webinars to come. But uh, this one is, is, I think, one that has been asked probably most frequently. Um, and it's actually so much content that I'm doing one on Saturday and one on Sunday. And they're, they're, they're linked together. So there's no repeat there on those days. But don't worry, Howard. I know you and our Patreon our members. I'll, I'll figure something out for you uh, to get you access to that content. Um, and Desmond is also saying here about the uh, the President Xi and Biden meeting. The meeting was longer than expected, which is a good thing. Yeah, I think so too. They're not going to be besties today or tomorrow, but it's just a beginning of a bit of a normalization. You know, countries should talk. They don't need to disagree on everything, but an, an open conversation is generally uh, something that gets you there. And, and Patrick, yes, they could have thrown digital X, right? Um, meta X, and then Facebook would have made some money. Um, how long is the webinar, Kelvin? Uh, they are both 90 minutes. So 90 minutes on Saturday, 90 minutes on Sunday. Why? Well, there's a lot to cover. Uh, there really is a lot of ground that we'll cover because options are a marvelous thing. And I'm not going to tell you just, you know, about call and put options. I would be really short selling you here on this free webinar. We're going to dig much deeper into more complex strategies and look at um, a lot more how this is a sort of data driven consistent income churner, the kind of investments that I do. Um, Arturo wants me to cover more, more so far. I can gladly do that. Desmond says NFT eggs, that could get expensive. And um, cool, cool. Okay, great. Thanks for all the questions there. Uh, Lewis Dasny is asking about LILIM earnings. I haven't looked at that, but we can do that in a moment here. Uh, so Let's do a quick roundup of what's happening pre-market, and then we'll dig deep into some stocks and your questions. Um, okay, consumer sentiment has hit a 10-year low. So the markets are up, but your man on the street isn't really participating, or if he is, he's possibly buying the wrong thing, which is one of the reasons I put out tons of free education on how to pick good stocks. And, you know, seriously, you shouldn't just put your money into Palantir and Neo. Uh, that's not a brilliant plan. You need to be a bit more diversified into great stocks. If you watched my last webinar, you will know a lot about, about that. Um, I'm also launching free education, a free education academy for those serving in the armed forces and veterans. So that's, that's here to come. Uh, that will be I'd like to say next week, but it'll probably take me a little bit more. It'll probably be launched in December. I think that's really the plan here. And I'm talking to lots of veterans and those actively serving. And it's going to be absolutely brilliant if we can do our bit and we can build a fun community and we can help people make a lot more money. Because if you work for 10 or 20 years in the military, you really deserve to be retiring on a fantastic financial freedom package there. Um Bitcoin is doing fairly decently despite China's threats to basically stop crypto mining. Uh, they're basically threatening um, public companies. You know, if you're crypto mining, you're going to be possibly be in trouble. We've got um, earnings out for Walmart. Uh, that's probably the biggest one today. We can look at that. And Barry. Michael Burry, which is the one name that all the doom, doomsayers, all the crash people talk about every single day. He's allegedly sold pretty much all his US stocks last quarter. That doesn't mean he isn't, doesn't still have positions, right? He could have uh, derivative or options positions. The man's very, very smart. And 
then you've got Jeffrey's list down below here of the 17 stocks that they say will outperform the market the most. Uh, I'll put the link up again. It's felixfriends.org slash top 17. So do download that. Now, on the political side, um, you've got a lot of noise. Uh, we obviously have the Biden Xi meeting. Uh, that was over three hours long, and they need ag agreed. Wait for this. This is this is mind blowing stuff on the need to find a better path forward amid increasing tensions. Um, okay, so Biden apparently said he just wants simple, straightforward competition, and um, he also talked about you know Taiwan and the usual nonsense and no major announcements, no joint statements. Uh, because they both try to lower expectations. So there are three hours well spent, but the market likes it. So uh, that's something. Republicans are going to introduce a bill to legalize cannabis. I hope you throw that out. Um, Nancy Mace is a freshman uh, from South Carolina, is going to introduce a bill which would federally decriminalize cannabis. Do you think it has a chance? Uh, I would say, from my point of view, and obviously I'm far rem removed from the US, I, I'd give that about 25% chance. I don't think that's going to happen, but it's going to be a first step towards this happening in this sometime down the road. It might kick off a bit of a, a cannabis investment craze uh, once again. Uh, we're not going to talk about Steve Bannon and uh, free Britney Spears and all that sort of stuff. We don't need to go into that. Uh, but um, generally speaking, the market is looking pretty optimistic, at least in the tech space. Let me show you here what the markets are doing. So NASDAQ is down 0.1%, S&P at zero, Dow Jones index is up. Volatility is up ever so slightly, but only at 17 points. Um, if you want to download those free top 17 rebound stocks from Jeffries, the link's down there on the screen. Felixfriends.org slash top 17. Um, Michael says they won't pass. I, I, I agree with you there. I don't think that's going to happen. But you know what? It's it's kind of how it, it starts, right? It, it might pass in 10 years or something, but that's kind of part of the process. Here. Um, Desmond thinks the income tax from legalizing would be good. Uh, I think it's a fairly long shot. I, I don't really see that happening. I think there are too many states that uh, would, would, would be opposed to that. And I actually don't think it's a very, very popular move for, for Biden probably. So he probably isn't going to go uh, for that. Um, a CH, okay, you watched the video I did with Popular Investor on, um, uh, thank you very much. That, that was, um, I appreciate you, you watching that. We're doing another one actually tomorrow. I'm talking, talking to uh, Riley McAdams. He's a brilliant guy. He's part of the pounding uh, da table uh, group. A uh, very interesting chap. And we are going to talk about Palantir's latest um, partnership uh, and, and why that matters and what that is really all about. And he's done some tremendous research on that. So we are going to talk about that. Uh, where, do you, where, where do we find each other? We're generally speaking on Twitter. So if you want to find me on Twitter, it's Finance Felix. Uh, that's my Twitter handle. Um, it was the only one that was available. So Shall we have a quick look at what Morgan Stanley is saying? Let me show it to you. Morgan Stanley have set an end 2020 S&P target of 4,400. Now, what's the S&P right now? S&P 500 is 4,600. So I wasn't particularly thrilled when I read 4,400 because that's 200 less. So that's, say, 5% down. Uh, that's how they see 2020. So what? why? Why would they say that? Now, not everybody says that. Uh, there are other analysts out there who are coming up with more positive numbers in the 5,000 range. But they are basically saying we're going to get more volatility. Earnings growth is going to slow. Bond yields are going to climb. You know, they really haven't taken their, their happy pills over at Morgan Stanley this morning. And they're saying companies managing supply chain disruptions and higher input costs is going to essentially impact earnings. Uh, so they are underweight on the benchmark S&P index, and they are therefore looking at a downside of about 5%. So if you are holding lots of S SPY or S&P 500 um, index funds, something to think about. What are they saying? Well, they think that Europe and Japan are going to grow most. Generally speaking, I'm not the biggest fan of foreign stocks uh, because... 
do some charts and, and see how abysmally European and Japanese stocks have, 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 have performed as a market. They're neutral on emerging markets. Um, they say there is uncertainty around expectation goes materially because of cost pressures, supply issues, uh, tax and policy uncertainty and so on. Um, the firm sees more catch-up potential elsewhere and less earnings volatility over the next 12 months. Um, what do they like? Well, they do like healthcare, they like real estate, and they like financials. Um, those are the sectors that I like the most. They really don't like um, tech hardware. So tech hardware for them is the, is the, the no-go. And what they're basically saying is that the whole, and I think that's kind of probably a reasonable statement here. They're not saying the whole market isn't going to rally up as much. It's going to depend on really individual quality stocks who are going to outperform, but the market as a whole isn't necessarily. Uh, and I think there could be some sense in that because if you look at the S&P 500, there are probably 30 great companies and then 470 that are ranging from average to really so-so. So if you've got tons of so-so, and you've had this tremendous increase in valuation, you might get some dry years. So I think picking great stocks is ever, ever more important. Um, and that's also exactly what we cover in the Seven Figure Portfolio program, which, by the way, I was launched, meant to launch today, but I didn't. And I'll show you why I didn't, but I launched it tomorrow. So tomorrow it's launching, which means that 40% of pre-sale pre coupon will vanish for good. It's the last time I'll talk about it. It's a promise. It's seven figure. It's the coupon. So do check that out. It's a completely risk-free thing. Uh, do you want to know what I was doing today? Let me show you. Um, it was a lot more fun than, well, I, I love launching programs and, and, and new communities, I must say, but uh, I, I also love doing this. So this is what I was doing today. I took Winston on a marvelous, beautiful hike. We did uh, almost 3,000 feet up today. Uh, can you see how steep that is and how happy he looks? He was very, very happy. He was a little hot, but he was very, very happy. And it was an absolutely beautiful day. It was a little bit on the steep side. Though. You see this sign here? Uh, that's when you find good hikes in Hong Kong. This is what the signs look like. Uh, danger. Uh, all the good ones do. Uh, and Hong Kong is actually a beautiful, marvelous place. Look at that. Look at all the islands and look at those mountains. So uh, that was me today, which is why that course is launching tomorrow, not today. I apologize to everybody on that program. But it's coming. It's going to be great. And it, it'll be a great community as well. So do join us on that if you haven't already. Um, William wants me to do classroom course options trading somewhere in the Caribbean. Um, you want me to basically come to Aruba and, and, and struggle on the beach and talk about options. Is that, is that what you're saying? Well, I think given the um, present travel restrictions and so on that we have here, uh, I think virtual things are probably best. But do feel free to reach out to me if you want to organize something. Um, uh, Howard, yes, we can look at Weijo. Absolutely. I was looking a little bit at that today, actually. I do like it. What does Weijo do? I've done some videos on that, Howard, but finding them isn't necessarily that easy because they're probably in my Palantir playlist, which is fairly extensive. So Weijo, in a nutshell, provides data, data points for EVs or for cars, generally speaking. Uh, so it's sort of a, um, a little bit of what Tesla has done. But to catch up everybody else with where Tesla is, they are collecting millions and millions of data points. I don't know, 11 million a day or something silly. Um, and obviously, Palantir is a backer there. In terms of valuations, pretty hard to go because you haven't got much data, really. You just don't. You haven't got much earnings. Yes, they've got some great partnerships. They've got some great clients. Uh, GM is also behind it. So I do expect them to get a lot of the legacy automakers and also some of the new EV guys who don't want to spend billions on R&D and are happy to use essentially foundry wire Weijo there. So it's a play on a potential shovel business for the EV industry. That's why I quite like it. Uh, let's have a look at what the, um, what the stock has actually done. Let me just pull that up here for you. a little bit smaller. Okay, this is the GGPI stock. Here is some excitement, right? 6% up again pre-market. Uh, how lovely is that? 1572. Um, but this is Vo Vozo, right? Virtuoso Acquisitions. Um, it's still trading at basically 
where it was listed, right? So it hasn't shot up at all. It listed at, I understand, $10. What was the opening? Yeah, $10 and it's trading at $9.70 pre-market. So uh, nothing has happened to this stock at all. Uh, but then very, very hard, as I say, to put a valuation on this. So it's a little bit of a of a punt that Palantir have picked a good one here. I think that would be, for me, the, the key thing. And I've gone through the investor deck. I've gone through their numbers and valuations and stuff. But it's very early stage. It's very much sort of a private equity type thing. So you have to believe more in management, um, the partnerships and, and the story and come to a conclusion on that basis. So would I throw my life savings at this? No, uh, maybe a small punt might be worthwhile. It's still trading below $10, surprisingly. Uh, David wants to look at the dark pool indicator. We can definitely do that today. Uh, hello, guy, AT and Joe. Um, Joe says, Icarus needs to watch out there if you are up to speed with your Greek classics. If you go too close to the sun, you know, you're, you melt. Well, I think it's just American investors are excited about putting their money into another American EV company. I think that's really what this is all about. We've got Lucid up here 10%, Rivian up 9%, GGPI up 6%, um, Peloton, by the way, making a bit of a recovery here, up 3%, Uber up 37 So the market is just bullish. I mean, XPang is up one9 and Neo down here also up to 4088. So people are just bullish on the space. I think that's really what this is about. Uh, Lucid is saying, uh, sorry, CH is saying Lucid is also a Wall Street bet st uh, stock. I'm sure there is some part of that. People are also trading this and swing trading this and doing all sorts of uh, crazy stuff with that. And always bear in mind, if Wall Street Bets is on there, it also means that all the hedge funds are in there, right? They're using that as a bit of a cover. Um, uh, Arturo has bought some SoFi. Okay, let's have a quick look at SoFi. Let me have a look at the chart here. Uh, you've got a... Buy order at 21.35. Okay, I, I hope you get filled on that because that's a fairly substantial drop from where we are. Uh, my thought on this is my little green channel here. I see that sort of the midline there as the, as the growth trajectory for momentum at present. We're above it at the moment. We could come back down to the sort of $21 range. I think it's possible. Uh, and then we probably going to zigzag our, our way up and down. Um, we've had... Some pretty crazy times here, up 12%. Before that was minus seven and, and, and minus two. So we basically went down and then back up to where we were. And we are pretty much still exactly where we were pre-earnings. So not a huge difference, actually. Just a lot of volatility. Uh, volume picking up a bit here, but not really enough to give us a trend. You see, the last day was positive. The day before that was slightly negative. But we're talking less than one percentage move here. So we're kind of stabilizing around this mid-22 range. Pre-market, we're at 22.58 at the moment. So let's have a look at momentum on this one. It's still positive, I think, just about, literally just about. So I think we might get slightly negative momentum today if the, the, the pre-market numbers are anything to go by. So we have, this is basically the zero line here, the green line. So we're just hovering above that. So uh, why would I expect that? Well, because I personally think we're going to go back down into the more kind of longer term uh, a growth trajectory here. Um, okay, you love Winston. Uh, thank you very much. If you just joined, Winston is a lovely little rescue golden retriever. Here he is. Look how happy he looks sitting on that mountain. Uh, but you can see the drop as well, right? So he's got this uh, hiking harness so i can carry him i had to carry him once or twice today because it was about 10 12 feet drops <laughs> and then we have to kind of pass him down man to man uh, but he's very very cooperative which is which is lovely so angel do you think ggpi is going to hit 20 by friday i don't know about that uh, i do think personally i am very bullish on this but i think it's you know there are some big announcements coming. I know the the car show in the US is, is taking place in November. Uh, we expect the Polestar 3 to be announced, which is going to be the, the American-made SUV. Uh, and then, you know, they're going to, 
put out a bits and bits of more information and more PR, more numbers, more financials. Uh, maybe they'll wheel Leonardo DiCaprio out because he's a shareholder. And, and, you know, all those things, it takes a bit of time to build that. But they have definitely managed to break out of the, nobody knows about this, except for me talking about this for the last what is it now? 11 months <laughs> and uh, a few people listening. Uh, so I think this is going to be a little bit more gradual. Pre-market is up 5%. So I wouldn't expect us to do another 15% today. I think people will also take some profits. People have learned from SPACs uh, and we are going to want to see this kind of go up a bit more gradually rather than this common, sort of complete insanity. Uh, I personally wouldn't be surprised to see this at 20 or even $30. But that's not financial advice. Uh, that's a high, high, high risk bet. Why? Just if you look at the, um, the market cap multiples. So Lucid is 72 billion here, market cap. Rivian, 129 billion, both with virtually zero sales. And then GGPI is essentially 20 odd billion. Um, at 15, I guess it might be 30 billion now. So, you know, you could see why that might go to 40, 50 or 60 or 70 to kind of meet mid lucid because they've actually got 1.6 billion US dollars in revenue this year forecast. So, you know, it's a little bit of a different one here. Uh, Leo, if you want to know what I think about that, what I'd suggest you do is I've got two videos out on this. So if, you know, YouTube and it's, Infinite Wisdom decides to load the web page here. I'll, I'll show you what they are. Uh, what's going on with YouTube? That's very surprising, isn't it? No, here we go. So Felix Oldstar, add that in, and there you go. You get two picture, uh, videos here. The first one is my IPO uh, sort of a full takedown of financials, investor presentation and everything and, and comparatives. Things. That was a month ago. And then I put one out two days ago uh, with, with a bit of an update on, on where we're heading here. So those are basically my, my two views. But I have been talking about Polestar for absolute ages. But uh, yeah, so watch those two. Just type in Felix Polestar and, and you'll find it. Phil, what UK shares do you feel worth looking at? Uh, Phil, almost nothing, I I'm afraid to say. And that's not me being uh, anti the UK. I love the UK. But let me give you a, a reason why. So if you look at the SPY, the US S&P 500, compare that to the FTSE 100, which is the UK sort of equivalent um, as an index. Where can we find that? Uh, iShare, iShare Core, FTSE 100. Okay, so let's look at that. And I'll make these both lines so it's a little easier for you to see. And they're both blue. Isn't that always marvelous? I don't know why it always does that. So I'm going to change the colors here. So we have in blue the S&P 500 and in red the FTSE 500. And now I'm going to go back in, out in time a bit. Okay. So this is from 2014 onwards, S&P 500, 150% up. FTSE is up 6%. And go back in time, and the, and the gap just widens basically. So generally speaking, the um, UK FTSE 100 is a pretty horrific index. I really wouldn't put much money into it. And you know, I'm I'm German, right? I don't invest in the DAX because again, it's pretty horrific. I can put that on there too. It might give uh, our UK listeners a bit of a uh, bit of pleasure. Um, here is the DAX. Okay, a little bit better, but still. Up 200%, S&P is up 300%. So I'd rather take the extra 100%. So generally speaking, the world's largest stock market will outperform the smaller ones. Why? Just makes sense, doesn't it? All the money wants to go to the US. All the big banks are American. Um, all the biggest investment funds are. The biggest pension funds are. The biggest hedge funds are. And that's where money goes. So therefore, US listed stocks tend to get higher valuations. So I feel I would personally not do that. Uh, I do actually throw lots of money at a UK fund, which is called Fundsmith, which I think is the best thing since sliced bread. But they invest in American stocks. 90% of their money goes into American stocks. Um, Rene wants to go to Aruba as well. That'd be funny, wouldn't it? We could can, we can do, um, do an, an Aruba party. Um, William says, uh, you think Rivian is a fake bubble, Neo struggling to take off? I wouldn't take it quite as harshly as that. I do think there is a huge space, a huge demand, an 
you know, satisfied demand for more American EV companies. Everybody wants to find the next Tesla. Uh, I have all reasons to believe they're going to put out decent cars and they're going to sell them and they're going to maintain them and they've got good investors and good backers and they're going to do all the right things. Our valuations uh, rich, as Kathy says. Yes, definitely. Um, and of course, compared to Neo, Neo looks very, very cheap. But you know, it's the world we live in. It's not always fair. It's a lot of bad momentum. So there we go. Now, Shazad, very smart question. What happened to Neo yesterday? Okay, let me show you a little chart here. Um, here we go. So this is institutional ownership of Neo, and oh, you can't see it. <laughs> there we go. I'll pull out a detailed video on this as well later. So if you are properly interested in this, but give, let me give you a, a short sort of rundown and. Let me get a little eraser first and I'll get rid of a lot of the stuff here. So what have we got? We've got, can you see that green line here I'm pointing at? That's institutional ownership of NEO as a percentage of shares owned. And you can see that's gone from 20 to about 17 in the last year. So institutional ownership is falling and that's not a good thing. And it's not just falling in percentage terms, because you might you might think, which is why I, I thought, I thought, hang on, hang on. Is that just because of dilution? They're holding the same amount of shares, but they're being diluted out. Uh, sadly, not so. Uh, in fact, the nominal, so the, you know, actually the number of shares that they own it, it, altogether have fallen as well. We've gone from 308 million at the beginning of the year to now 290 million. So institutions are not putting their money where their their, their mouth is. With all those marvelous price targets, they're putting less money, well, less shares and less percentage ownership into NEO. So that to me is a big factor because otherwise we've had upgrades, we've had lots of marvelous things. I shared that with you also on the on the Discord. You know, we've seen some of the price targets here. Uh, where are they? Um, this is our Discord. If you're not on that, you can join through the. Uh, Patreon community, you know, City $87, Morgan Stanley 80, Deutsche 70, JP Morgan 60. We've got Citic out today with a price target of $56, which is um, here is our summary. This is this file. You can find that on the Patreon, the Neo Deliveries Earnings and Ratings Tracker. And then you can see all the price targets from all the different bankers and dates and so on. And that gives us a 55% upside, but they're not really throwing their money at it, right? So that's therefore a bit of an issue and it's something that's concerning a little it is uh, and we should keep an eye on that uh richard's asking should i buy ggpi now richard i can't really answer that for you um i i mean i i bought it at obviously much lower price levels uh, before it had shot up but um it's going to be super volatile that's all i would really say on this is that uh, this is going to go up and down like mad. And, you know, and you see these massive jumps. Some of that's institutionals, but a lot of that will also be, you know, the Wall Street bets crowd and all that sort of thing. So you could get this 50% up, 50% down thing. Um, personally, what I would suggest is look at the valuations, look at the comparisons to others and see how it fits into your portfolio. Uh, diversification is always a big thing. So if your portfolio is in 100% NEO or something, I wouldn't throw GGPI at it, just even though I think it's a good fit, good company, because you need to diversify a little bit more. I've put out two videos, as I said, on this. Uh, so if you type Felix Polestar into YouTube, you'll see them at the top here and you, you can check them out. Uh, Silent X, the big bear AI deal. I like it. Uh, to me, essentially, I like all of these partnerships. It just gives Palantir access to other people's customers. I like those. I'm doing a full conversation and discussion on that tomorrow with Riley McAdams. If you don't know who he is, uh, he is part of the Pounding the Table community. They do great podcasts uh, and uh, very active on Twitter as well. And he's done some great research on that. So we're going to really dig deep into that Silent X. So uh, tomorrow, shortly after the live stream, I'll, I'll put that out. We, we'll do that tomorrow. So uh, join me for that tomorrow. And if you aren't subscribed yet, you will miss out. So make sure you do that. Danzo says, Lucid One Car of the Year. Well, I mean, I wouldn't buy a stock on the basis of that, but it is good for them. It's good PR. It's a well done uh, Lucid. 
Uh, Philip is picking up more PayPal. So PayPal obviously had a pretty horrific run. Uh, it seems to be stabilizing somewhat, right? Uh, we are seeing a little bit of a recovery here. Let me go for the percentage points. Uh, you know, we were saying before the rally started, uh, we were saying here on the live, I think on Thursday or something, that I, I thought maybe the 200, 201 was our sort of baseline. It so far appears to be that we've got one, two, three green days in a row, which is good. Doesn't quite make a rally yet, but it's certainly is starting to get things turning around. Let me look at an indicator here. So can you see this little purple line down here? That needs to creep up over this dash line to give us a real buy signal from, from Williams R. So another, you know, two, three percent up or so, and we might actually get there. Um, Uh, David thinks PayPal is one of the best stocks uh, deals in the market. Well, my biggest holding, so I'm with you on that one. Um, Lucid and Rivian have yet to prove themselves. Um, they do, yes. And that is indeed the risk. The risk is indeed that they are priced to have to perform, right? They haven't really got a choice unless they do a stellar job, put out great cars with very little recalls. There will be some, every car company has some, but generally speaking, does a great job. And, um, you know, they need fantastic cats inside their cars. Otherwise, nobody will want to buy them. This one's making a racket here. Um, so you smash the like button, guys, for our fluffy friends. I'll keep donating. And that's the risk, essentially, is that all that great stuff that is hopefully going to come is pretty much priced in. So there's some serious pressure here on management to perform but certainly the market at the moment flying 6% up for both Lucid and Rivian uh, and GGPI up 5.5%. Uh, Joe is sharing, I've had the chance to drive a Polestar, amazing car and true to its roots. Volvo is brilliant. Thank you very much, Joe. Was that the Polestar 1 or the Polestar 2? Uh, I'd love to know that. Uh, Adgo says rescues are the best indeed. Rescue creatures all around. This little kitten as well. This is a a Hong Kong street cat special, uh, sweetest little thing in the world. Um, Chief, good morning. Rene, who's Winston named after? Well, Winston Churchill, of course. He's got the gravitas, you see. Uh, he sleeps and drools. <laughs> um, Absolutely, Churchill. There's only there's only one Winston. Although you know what, there is a, a very famous cigarette brand I understand in the Philippines called Winston as well. But that was not the intention uh, when we we named him. It just seemed like a very silly, serious name for a not very serious dog. Um, Ad Ghost. Why would they be selling Neo? Yeah, you actually are spot on there, the Ad Ghost. That um, <laughs> cat on my shoulder. That. Um, a lot of the institutions started getting out of growth stocks around about May. Uh, and that's because that's when we all really were all freaking out about inflation, when bond yields were at sort of 1.8 and everybody was predicting the end is near, as people are again now. So people invest institutional funds, pension funds and so on. We're getting out of those stocks that would be most affected by that and putting them more into your, um, you know, Quality stocks, you sort of Microsoft and so on that have lots of free cash flow and, and that kind of thing. Um, lots of day trading go on. Uh, really wants me to interview Munish Prabai on why he sold Alibaba. I'd love to. Uh, if you if you have his email to hand, I'd love to drop him a line. Uh, Rudy, uh, very interesting. And of course, not particularly great for the stock. Although it doesn't seem to make much of a difference because Alibaba is still trading at 169 here as we speak. So he doesn't have as much influence as we think, but it probably hasn't helped uh, over the last quarter. Um, Tesla goes up and you goes down. What's wrong with this market, says David? Well, it's, you know, a bit of volatility, uh, really. I mean, Neo has also gone up more than 10x, right? So it's not like it hasn't gone up. It's just you have to look at longer time periods a little bit to see uh, what goes on there. Desmond says, does he like cigars too? Only the edible kind, Desmond. Uh, the kitty's name, this one is called Talula. There we go. Uh, Talula is this one who is um, a, 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 an absolute marvel. 
<sighs> Full Joker saying, how do you feel about cruise stocks? Mm, not a huge fan, to be honest with you. Anything that involves very large items made out of steel, like airlines and those kind of things, I'm generally not a huge fan. Very cyclical business as well. Mohammed is saying Tesla is green again. Let me have a look. Um, let me have a look. Tesla, yeah, it's 1036, 1036. Tesla is catching a bit of a break here. Xpang also up 3.5%. Neo up to 4125. Um, what happened to Palantir? Palantir is selling off again to 2299. I might have to actually adjust my options play here a little bit, but I, I will share that with you guys on my on the Discord, on the Felix Trades channel as I do that. Uh, William Lee, what are your thoughts on Morgan Stanley advising people to stay away from stocks and bonds in 2022? I didn't quite read it that way, William. I think what they have actually said is they don't think the market overall is just going to blindly outperform. They think the overall market could go down 5%. What they are saying is that individual stocks are going to outperform. And so they're saying people will look more, dis be more discerning uh, with their consumption of stocks rather than just buying everything. Like, you know, we typically see here uh, EV stocks, all five EV stocks go up, right? We don't look at really what's going on behind it. So they're basically saying people are going to be a little bit more careful with that. And therefore, stock picking will be more important going into 2022. And if you want to know more about that, Last day, promise you, absolute last day. How you build a seven figure portfolio, one of the big, big chunks of that is how you pick great stocks and what metrics you look at uh, that, in my view, will outperform the rest of the market and have done traditionally. Um, my portfolio certainly has tremendously outperformed the market. So, 40% pre sale coupon is still here today because. I went hiking this morning and therefore didn't launch this course, but it's definitely launching tomorrow. So uh, this is your absolute last chance to do that. So do check check that out if you are interested in that. Uh, but yeah, so I think, you know, we've been in this phase of everything is up, everything is wonderful, everything is marvelous. Uh, I do think next year is going to be a little bit more challenging to pick great stocks. And I think they, they will do very well because people will be a little bit more cautious about inflation and interest rate rises and so on. So Money will flee to safety, and therefore safety are great stocks. Um, and, and Danzo, thank you very much Tesla, for that Tesla warning here to the community. Elon is still selling. Uh, I totally agree with you that. Um, <laughs> Renee says, Winston tastes good as a cigarette should. Um is a cigarette advertisement. <laughs> uh, thanks for that. Um, Afal says, Prabhai Monish is rumored to be going for 10 cents now. Well, we'll see. And, and Desmond, yes, I, I'm, I think this is a very good summary. Desmond is, is the master at one-liners. Thank you, Desmond. Uh, Morgan Stanley is basically saying it's a stock picker's market going forward, uh, not just blindly throwing money at everything, hoping everything will go up. Uh, Rudy says that we should see less selling from, from Alex. Uh, I generally agree with you on that, except that towards 2029, 2030, you are going to see a lot more selling because that's when they all expire. But I can show you a little chart here. Let me just open this up. And you can see uh, what insiders are doing. So insiders actually, this is Palantir Insiders, after the IPO, of course, it dropped. And since then, it's actually increased. So from the beginning of the year, insiders owned 1.06% of the stock. And now they own 1.3%. So it seems to be leveling out at 1.2. They now own 23.35 million shares. So 3.5 million shares more than at the beginning of the year. Uh, and you can see here what the breakdown is. Uh, Peter Thiel, Alex Karp, David Glazer, Shyam, Alex Moore are basically the bank of, bulk of that here. Uh, Alex Karp owning 6.4 million shares there. Um, <laughs> Ryan, money will flock to great stocks. Palantir. Uh, I, I, I love that you think that, uh, Ryan. I do think Palantir is a great stock, but it 
at this point doesn't quite yet have the financials, the metrics to back it up. So no, I actually think money will flee more into things like Microsoft, you know, that have the great return on, on capital employed, they'll have great big free cash flow, uh, high multiples for interest coverage, very steady, very stable earnings growth. Uh, you know, those kind of stocks, I think, is where the money will, will, will likely run to. Uh, Piers is saying, do you think Apple missed the boat with the EVs? Not necessarily. I mean, the brand power of Apple is such that they can catch up very quickly. So they're not, you know, if you if you now launched the, the, the Piers car, uh, then it, with all due respect to you, it will probably take you five to 10 years to build that brand. Apple has already got the brand. They certainly have the money. So there is a chance there. I think if they are going to partner with somebody, I would still think they are looking at the uh, sort of Foxconn type world, which is who they're working with right now. But they've talked to CATL, apparently, which is the largest battery manufacturer in the world who supplies Tesla and Neo and everybody else. And they said to CATL, will you build a plant in the US to build batteries for us? And CATL said, mm, no. And I think that's the problem they have. So they need a battery partner who's able and willing to supply them. And they want to build it in the US because it makes sense to build it in the US, right? Um, uh, Desmond, yeah, Desmond is right. You know, there's a there's a limit of uh, if, if your income is above I don't know 122 thousand dollars or something, you can't put money into Roth IRAs, right? Well, there's a backdoor a way into that. So Peter Thiel has found that backdoor, and he's got billions in his Roth IRAs. Um, oh, just enough. That's a great one. That's a classic. Look at this classic of a joke. Hard to drive an Apple car, though. No windows. I mean, that's that's a good one. I, I really appreciate that. That's that's pretty brilliant. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Uh, that, that, that should go on a, on, a, on a wall or something. So let's have a look at what the market's doing here. Rivian still flying up 9%. Lucid up 6%. Peloton up 6.5%. Recovery there. Tal inexplicably up 4.8%. Uber up 5.5%. PDD is up... Uh, Polestar, which is GGPY, is up 3.76%, so at 1534. So it seems to be kind of like stabilizing here at around $15 before I think it, it might take a, another stab at the $20 range. A pretty green market overall, except SoFi down 4%. We'll have to have a look at why that is. And Palantir also inexplicably down 2.5%. I don't really know why. Is there any news on? So far, let me have a look. Oh, the secondary offering. That's why. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, so far is offering stock, a secondary offering by selling stockholders. 50 million shares by selling. So this is not dilutive. This is not going to cause dilution. It just, just means that 50 million shares will be sold. So I have to find some buyers for that. So that's going to put a little bit of downward pressure on there. I'd love to know who those stockholders are. Um, oh, it's SoftBank, right? Silver Lake Partners, Qatar Investment Authority, Red Crow, uh, Cha Cha Cha, SPAC. So these are basically um, private equity investors, right? They want to get their money out. So that's what that's the whole point, right? They're listed, they wait for the stock to go up uh, and they make the money back. That's the whole purpose of the existence of these investment uh, funds. So nothing particularly shocking there, but it's going to put a bit of pressure there. Um, and William Lee, you are completely right. There is no dilution. It's just a bit of selling pressure. Uh, that's well, 50 million stocks worth of selling pressure. What's the, the volume on SoFi usually? Um, can I see that here? Uh, okay, we could just, I guess, I guess we could just pull up the stock. That would probably be easier. So, so fine. Lipo Technologies volume is, I'd say on average, probably about 20 million or so. It's about two and a half days of, of volume. So it's, it's going to, yeah, it's going to, going to cause a little bit of a dent here for sure. Um, so yeah, thanks for, thanks for throwing those questions out. 
If you haven't yet, sign up for the free webinar. It's this weekend. I'll teach you how you can earn consistent income with options trading. Uh, it's a two-part webinar. It's completely free, but it's not on YouTube, so you have to register for it. So go to felixfriends.org slash webinar and sign up. Otherwise, you'll be missing out, and that'll be, be terribly sad. Uh, so we wouldn't want that now, would we? Uh, we also have Jeffrey's top 17 stocks uh, that they say are not just cheap, but that they believe will re rebound. Uh, so download that. It's a free uh, benchmark here. If you are on the Patreon, you have access to this already. You don't need to sign up. You just go on the Patreon uh, and you get it. If you aren't, uh, just go to felixfriends.org slash top 17. Uh, I try to put out something useful and free pretty much every single day here on this channel. So if you watch me a lot, you'll, you'll get a lot of these benchmarks, but I think they are very useful. What do I normally do with them? Well, to start with, click on file, make a copy, and then you can edit it as to, to your heart's content. Uh, I like to put a little filter on these. So you highlight the area, click and put a little filter on this here. And then for me, the number one thing is always return on capital employed. So I generally sort it by that. And then that typically puts the greatest companies at the top. So Logic, Virtue, Lithium Motors, and you can see their gross profit margins. They're looking pretty good here. Virtue Financials looks quite interesting, actually. Uh, huge free, um, free cash flow margins. Long-term earnings growth, not great, 5%, but pretty steady. But yeah, so that's a little bit the, the, the issue there. Financial leverage is also very high, but that's that's a financial company then. So, you know, look look through some of these and 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 think about what this is all about. Do a bit more research. Do share it if you're on the Discord community. We'd all love to hear what you think. Um, what did I miss? Joe, Joe, Joe. Um, <laughs> how many Neo jokes do you get when you're on here? Um, did, we, did I miss a Neo joke? Was there another one? Um, so far, just enough uh, gets the gets the award for best uh, joke of the day. William Lee says, can you take a look at all the data for year 2021 market performance? 2021 was a terrible year for growth stocks. But I think we might, as we get to the end of the year, do some sort of roundups and summaries of data and so on. Um, was it? Well, it depends on what you mean by that, of course. I mean, if you look at QQQ year to date, not too shabby, right? It's in percentage points, 27%, which by my metric is a pretty good return because if you compounded that and you managed to get this over time, you'd probably be up about 60% each year. So if you did this over like, 10 or 20 years, you you know, making doubling your money every year and a half or something silly. So it's that, that's actually pretty impressive. But of course, in the QQQ, they're not all sort of your classic growth stocks. Uh, we've basically got the inflation fears in. We also had a massive rally last year from COVID to, um, you know, end of the year. So when you, you know, start here, whoops. Can I have a pen, please? Uh, this was COVID, and then we got that massive recovery till the end of the year, uh, which is, where's the end of the year? The end of the year was basically here. So that got us, you know, from pre-COVID levels. Let me look at that. Can I, can we move that over? Yeah, so this is from pre-COVID levels to year end. It went up 32% last year. So it went up another 27% uh, this year. So pretty extraordinary performance, really. Stefan, you are the dentist. I hope they treated you kindly. Uh, great of you to join us. Philco is so far a bit like PayPal. Hmm. Potentially. I mean, the trouble is, and I know, Philco, you, I think you watched, you watched my last webinar. You'll understand the challenge between valuing a company like PayPal and a company like SoFi. So far, we've got very little data to go on so far. What we do have, though, is that the whole student loan market has been a catastrophe, yet so far I have managed to outperform expectations by creating other businesses and cross-selling. So 
management's doing a pretty good job there. That's the way I would look at that. But it, it is still a much, much higher risk play than, than PayPal is. But potentially, yes, potentially. Uh, Stefan says, click the like button. Felix deserves it. I appreciate that. Our fluffy creatures deserve it too. Here they are. Look at that fluffy little goat. Uh, so press the like button, guys. Uh, I, it would make a huge difference to the community. I also want to say a huge thank you. 28,000 of you have hit that subscribe button, which makes me very ecstatic on Sunday. I wake up to that Sunday morning. So a huge thank you uh, for everyone who is to everyone who's, who's, who's done that. Uh, let's do a quick roundup here. So Morgan Stanley is basically saying S&P could be down 5% in 2022. That doesn't mean everybody should hide and dig a hole and you know live in a bunker. Uh, they are basically just saying picking individual stocks, great stocks, is going to be more important and the market overall is not just going to rise like that. Now, they could be right, they could be wrong. But I think given that we've had here two years of pretty extraordinary returns in a row, selecting great stocks is, is likely a very, very important. So if you want to know how to do that and you want to know all about portfolio management and how you can track what you've got and whether it's great or not, join the Build a Seven Figure Portfolio Program. It's launching tomorrow. So today is finally the last day, the utterly last day when I'll ever mention a 40% off pre-sale coupon, 77 figures that coupon. So check it out. Go to felixfriends.org slash seven. It's a brilliant program. It'll teach you not just how to pick great stocks, but also how to allocate your assets, how to measure it, how to track it, how to be a professional portfolio manager for yourself and be properly independent and well-versed on everything. It'll also have a lovely community where you can chat with me every day. And uh, we are also doing some... Um, private live stream chats on that where you can uh, talk about your questions and your issues and your pain points with me. So on that note, I want to say a huge thank you for tuning in. I truly appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We've got some more great content coming out later today. Make sure you are subscribed tomorrow. I'm also doing a special um, Palantir special. I'm talking to Riley McAdams. You should Follow him on Twitter if you haven't already from Pounding the Table. They do some great podcasts and we're going to talk all about Palantir's new partnership. If you haven't already, go to felixfriends.org slash webinar and take part in our free, entirely free options webinar this weekend. And I'll leave you with the contents of the seven-figure portfolio here if you want to consider that last chance for that price point. Uh, have a beautiful day and a lovely trading successful, whatever you're doing today. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.